Well, it's about that time. Another edition of South Africa's Premier Netball League, the Telcom Netball League, returns bigger and better as it has been growing every single year. And uh, sitting with me to talk about what we can expect from the brand new edition is, of course, Nepal South Africa President, Ms. Cecilia Molukwane. President, thank you so much for your time. And it feels like just yesterday when we were looking ahead to another season of TNL. And yet again, we're back here. What can we expect this year that is going to be different and say, well, TNL has arrived? It's going to be very exciting this year, I can tell you, because we have in the spa proteas in the country. The ones that are in the country are going to play in their various teams. I was even saying earlier, I want to see a game between the Jaguars and the Fireballs and the Fireballs mm -hmm. and the Cranums and the Jaguars and the Cranums because there's where may, the dominantly the players, the national players are at. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's, it's a season of where the two coaches that we've just appointed mm -hmm. to see the talent, the depth of the talent we have and not focusing on teams or not focusing on broadcasting, yeah. you know, only focusing on the players that we are playing and saying, what is that that I want as a coach taking the team forward to 2027. This is a very crucial TNL for me. Mm -hmm. I'll say, and I'll, if you ask me why, I'll say to you, this is where it all begins. New coaches, new era, and we're looking forward towards 2027. So if you cannot raise your hand now, I mean, we, it takes four years for us to prepare for a World Cup. Yeah. So you cannot raise your hand better than this. And, and what is the rationale behind having the national team players back in their home teams and not having them together perhaps with the new coaching duo that many people perhaps would have expected to be the approach? Obviously, if we had Jenny and Zanella coaching the team, everybody was going to lose against, <laughs> against them. So we can't have a, a losing you know, tournament where everybody's losing against the Spa Proteas. Mm -hmm. But I think it's good because it also gives the teams a boost and a moral, a, that moral boost to say, if we have a national player, you, you know, maybe they boost the teams and they say, if she can be in the team, mm -hmm. I, I, why can't I be? If I can play with her, why can't I be at the same level as her? So it also encourages these players to say, if I see her and play against and maybe I, I stole one or two balls from her. You know, it gives them that, yeah. that, that sense of, you know, I can do it. And, and we want that to happen because if, imagine if you take a ball from Carla, you, you'll be saying, oh, yeah. I took a ball from Carla or a Camuhelo. You take a ball from Camuhelo, say, the one that Bruce can, cannot defend. What am I if I can take a ball from her? So that is the encouragement that I think having national players in their various teams and them playing against each other, not only at trials, but playing against each other and see their strength yeah. on not playing as a team, but playing as individuals in their own provincial teams. I think that will help the coach a lot. And, and with that, of course, it means that there's going to be less spaces for other players to get into those teams. What is the plan looking like to bleed in new talent in the TNL? Because we've seen it being so crucial in terms of talent identification and some of the players that we've seen making it all the way to the top. To me, it's not taking anybody's space. I mm. think people took their space because the, at the beginning, they're the ones that began to play there. But as we look at it, that's why we are growing TNL every year. Yeah. Because we want more skills, more talent. So it's coaches shouldn't struggle in finding these players that they want to see. And we shouldn't struggle as a country also to fight, to see, because you know, it's good that the, the country start to associate with players that they see. Mm -hmm. To say, but I saw this player at TNL, I'm not surprised he's playing fast five. I saw these players, I'm not surprised he's in the under 21, you know, World Cup team. Mm -hmm. I saw these players, I'm not surprised he's in the Spa Protea team. Cause the more you identify with players, the more you get to know them, is the more you get to follow the players, follow the team. So the more teams we have and the more players we have, the more competitive it becomes. It, it would have been monotonous to always have the same players every mm. time playing the same league because you would have known, uh, Andy, you, 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 are a, you, you are one of the commentators. You would have known that, okay, the move is going to be this this yeah. way. So mm -hmm. now if we have uh, new players, we don't even know, know the move. We don't even have, you know, we know the game plan of the coaches because coaches are different now. And we've got a lot of young upcoming coaches coming in and their game plans are obviously different. And it will be nice that, you know, the national coaches engage 
with these other coaches mm. on a one-on-one -on -one basis to say, what makes you t take that decision that you took at the last minute that cost you the game or that made you to win the game? Because it's not only about costing you the game, but also about winning the game. So to me, this is one unique TNL that we have. And, and while we're talking about the national team setup, of course, we are going to go into the teams in the TNL. But just wrapping up the chat, you are talking about the role of the two coaches. We've seen previously under Norma Plummer that they were looking at videos, assessing some of the players, giving feedback, what is the role of Jenny van Dijk and Zanelem Dotana now in the TNL and the sort of feedback loop that you would have between the players and of course yourselves as the federation as well? I think this is, as I said, this is one unique tournament and I love it because of the coaches are there physically. Yeah. They're there to see, you know, these players play and they are not even going to engage with them after three, four days. I mean, they can access them at any time to say, Fix seven, eight, nine, and not only doing that to the player, but also doing it to the coach that the player is being coached with at the time, at the moment. Because you know, Jenny, when we interviewed her, I think when she she did a presentation to us, because I was not in the interviews. I think when we did the presentation to us to say what 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 is her plan is like working with these coaches of these players. Mm -hmm. So is their 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 goals and objectives should be the same. So is the player must not come to camp and see Jenny do this and the coach do the other one. Because at the, at the end of the day, our, our goal is one. We want a medal on our neck. Mm. And if we want a medal, it's not for Jenny, it's not for you, it's not for me, it's for the country. Well, let's go into the competition now. Back in Gauteng for the full duration. Why was that important to Nepal, South Africa, to forge forward that partnership with the Gauteng provincial government and to have the full competition in one location? Look, we, we all know that um, Venues are very expensive. We, we are yet to build our arena. And maybe after we build our arena, we'll talk a different story. But for now, we know that the venues are very expensive. But we need collaborations. We cannot work as an island. Mm -hmm. we, we are not an island. We cannot work in silos. We have to have partners. We have to have partnership with people that have the facilities, that people that have the, 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 the resources that we don't have. Mm -hmm. We have to recognize our weaknesses. So as we say, how do we mitigate on our weaknesses? And how do we involve other people to come on board and work with? That's why the marriage between us I call it a marriage yeah. between <laughs> us and the city of Joburg because um, we want to make sure that at the end of the day, whatever we are doing, we get in that girl child and boy child in a township mm -hmm. an opportunity to see the stars that um, they see on TV mm -hmm. live and to say, but I was at this TNL when this player became the player of the tournament or this player became the center court player of the tournament and I've learned so much and now I'm going to recruit other girls in my community. To me, it's about recruiting other girls in your community to say, yes, I'm from Alexander, but how many other girls from Alexander mm -hmm. I want to recruit to come and be part of netball? And that's how we grow the game. And to get the schools in Gauteng to come and watch these stars, because it all begins at basic education. And if we have that and we have it correct, I don't think we'll be having problems that we previously have, because when I came in, there were problems. But now, after we have this beautiful relationship with SA Schools Netball, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the problems have ceased. And we are now priding ourselves to say, Telcom, there's TNL, Telcom, there's TNC. Yeah. You know, where we have partnered with schools to say, under 17, 18, and our under 19s, we're playing together and we're doing this together. So this is a very crucial tournament for us in the country, especially to identify the talent that we need to identify, not only for the SPA proteas, and people think it's only about the mm. SPA proteas. We've got Fast Five coming. This is where we identify them. We've got President 12. This is where you identify them. Even the under 21s yeah. that were playing the qualifiers, how will they be performing? This is us following them up, making sure that at the end of the day, we have the right team to represent us in, in Gibraltar. Well, so Ellis Park, that's going to be the venue. Safety concerns around that part of Johannesburg, that's something we can't get around from. So how do you then reassure those who want to come enjoy the sport of netball that they'll be able to do so safely? In our signing of our marriage, we were guaranteed and assured that that place will be full of your JMPD mm. and will be full of your Mapanyapanyas, will be full of this private security. So we know that when it comes to security, um, it's going to be, it's, it's, where it's done, actually. Let mm. me say it, it's done. It's a done deal, it's done. And 
We have hosted the Quad Series there before. We mm. never had an incident. So we are not going there for the first time that we are doubting ourselves of what is happening. We know that with the collaboration that we had and the signing that we have, it has actually said to them, you cannot want to marry me and not protect me. Mm. I mean, it's, it's, it's simple as ABC. You can't want to be a partner of mine and not want to protect me. So mm. if you become my partner, you must protect me. So I believe the city of Jovek and the Gauteng Provincial Department are going to protect us. So let's move from logistics then to matters on court. You've been advocating for the professionalization of the league. We haven't seen that yet. How far are we from realizing that dream? And when can we expect then as the Nepal community that we will have a fully professional league? 2025, we promised. You know me better. Ah. Uh, you know me better. We promised 2025. We will start at my, my my vision and my aim was always, and you have known that, that is mm. to start with small teams. If you want to be professional, you cannot start with 18 teams. You can't start with nine teams. We want to start with six teams and get the best of the best players that the coaches and the selectors would have mm. identified to say, we place them in different teams so as the competition becomes you know, competitive so as the sponsors, more sponsors can come on board, mm. more partners can be on board, so as we do this together. But 2025, believe you me, I don't think those players that are overseas, they'll see <laughs> one of a spectacular professional league that they don't want to go overseas anymore. Okay, so there's a date. 2025 is perhaps where we can expect to have a fully professional league in South Africa. But you've mentioned something, and that is perhaps having less teams. The way that the TNL is going, though, it's growing. Another team being introduced this year. What was the thinking behind that? Every province doesn't have 12 players. Let's mm. be honest. They've got more than 12 players who are excellent, who are good in what they're doing. So let's unleash the talent mm. and show the talent that South Africa has. It's not about netball South Africa or about TNL going. It's about unleashing the talent of coaches, of players. And remember, more teams, more umpires. More teams, more technical. So we are unleashing all this talent that is there in the country. And we are doing that. So it's, even the coaches should have it easy for mm -hmm. themselves. And I'm, when I'm saying the coaches, I'm not only saying the under, you know, the spa portier coaches, mm -hmm. the under 21 coaches, the first five coaches, uh, the president's 12 mm -hmm. coaches, all the coaches, the under 19 coaches, all of them have the opportunity of seeing these players playing at a high level. And you cannot have that opportunity if you don't give them that opportunity of playing at this level, because this is the flagship of Netball South Africa. Where else do you want to play than at TNL? And you had previously mentioned when the competition started with 10 teams that the goal was to have two in each province. We still have two provinces that don't have two teams. Is that still the plan? Still the plan. However, we are going to look at the performance also and how is the province, you know, made because that is very key and crucial. Mm -hmm. um, I'll give you an example. Would it even be better for you to give Gauteng a third team, mm -hmm. you know, than to take a team to a province that is still struggling in mm -hmm. building itself? Because when you're doing that, you are not doing justice to netball. Is, will it even be, you know, um, a, a advisable to give a Western Cape another team? You know, th that is what me, me thinking out of the box, not saying that it will be that late, but let's yeah. see how it unfolds. And then obviously we need to give every province two teams. But if it goes to that level that we say, you know what, Northern Cape uh, or, or Pumalanga, because there are the two that are remaining, yeah. this is what is happening. We need to sit down with people and, you know, put facts on the table. It's not about what I want or what you want, but it's about the bigger elephant mm -hmm. in the room, which is netball and the growth of netball in the country. And as we wrap up then, how do you entice people? If you're saying TNL 2024 is bigger and better than anything we've ever seen before, what is it that makes it so special? What is it that people should be looking forward to? And if you were to tell them, this is how I'm selling the product, what is that selling point? This year, one thing that I can sell is go to Ellis Park and see the best of the best on court. People that you see in the national team are no longer in national teams. They are in their provincial teams. Come see their life. Come engage with them. And come take selfies with them. <laughs> I think that will say to you, I have, I'm here. I wanted to meet them. Have that chance with them. And come and see netball at its level best. Because the coaches that are coaching there, <laughs> best of the best. And I know I said that was the last question. <laughs> but we'll throw one more in. And that is the relationship with Telcom. We had said previously, not willing to disclose just how long the length of the contract is, but what is the status now? Are we going to be seeing TNL continuing in years to come? And, and what is the status of the relationship? 
No, we have renewed with contra with, with Telcom for another three years. So uh, TNL will still be playing. Yeah. So there's, TNL is going nowhere. It's giving more opportunities, more teams, more players, more everybody an opportunity. And thank you to Telcom for believing in us. And thank you to Telcom for giving a player an mm. opportunity. Because I always say the core business of netball is the players. It's not me or you. However, the player herself and himself. Ah, oh, President, thank you so much. Of course, we could be speaking for quite a bit if we're having a netball discussion, but that's what you can look forward to, the Telcom Netball League, as it pre uh, prepares to get launched uh, later on this month. It is time for the Telcom Netball League, and of course, there's some coaches that can brag and say it's a league that they know all too well and a trophy that they know too well, and one of those being Jenny van Dijk, the former coach of the Gauteng Jaguars, having lifted the title with the team, now switches her focus to the senior national team, of course, and her responsibilities as the head coach of the Spark Proteas. And Jenny, thank you so much for your time, and it must be quite difficult for you transitioning. You're looking at this trophy and going, well, this is the life I used to lead. Now I need to focus on the bigger picture, which is getting the new talent into the spa protest. Yes, definitely, but a welcome change mm. and something that I've been looking forward to for quite a long while. I think it will all set in the moment we step onto court and we start with the actual netball part mm. of it. Um, but it's been exciting so far and it's just been such a great privilege. And, and what is your role going to be? Because you're obviously not coaching a team in the TNL, but you're going to be very involved what does that involvement look like? Yes, well, first up, obviously, as a selector, we want to make sure to have a very good look at all the players. It's an interesting year because I do feel that there will still be quite a few new players coming mm. into different teams at um, probably the right time. Yeah. And I would like to see especially some of the younger players. Who, I mean, we saw the, the baby Pratias perform well mm. during the African qualifiers. Uh, we want to see how they step up in, in their preparation to the World Cup next year. So, yes, first up, definitely the selection part. So um, we know our players well and we hope to get to know a few more. And, but then all, obviously um, having some communication with the, play, with the coaches and the players and to make sure that we have um, important discussions and get our players to, to just focus on the standard that we want to set out in this league. We can't really have a conversation about player identification without really taking a step back and having a conversation about player contracts. Has that been resolved? Do you have a pool of players that have been contracted that you are selecting from? Or is this going to be a brand new process where you're looking at the full net and casting it wide and seeing who you can actually identify? Well, look, in January we had a very substantial selection camp. Most of the, the top coaches were selected during that camp and a lot of the decisions we have made is based on what we have seen there already. Those contracts we are busy with and you know I'm sure the president in the time that she's ready mm. they will make a big announcement soon enough. So for us um, we, are, we are looking into some of the training partners because mm. a lot of our contracted players um, will probably also be playing overseas in, in well, well, they are playing yeah. overseas as well. Um, and we obviously want to see who the youngsters are. We want to give opportunity to train with us a little bit as well. So, yes, but in saying all of that, just because a pretty player has a contract doesn't mean she, she has a definite um, position in the team. Mm. She'll need to work for it and she'll need to show that her fitness and the level and the standard that she's carrying is, is well worth it. And if anybody draws our, our attention and if we feel that somebody needs opportunity, um, it's as easy as bringing them in as a training partner and giving them opportunity to show us what they can do. Of course, newly announced duo with uh, Zainal Dotana being your assistant. In terms of how you see that relationship mapping out going forward and perhaps the roles that you'll be fulfilling during this time of talent identification and feedback to coaches, what does that look like? Yes, look, it's a very important uh, relationship for me. Um, I expect we are working well, we're working together well, but I expect us to have difficult conversations. Um, we've had quite a lot of difficult conversations so far, and you know, it's it's not about Jenny or Zanelli, it's about yeah. what's best for South Africa. And in order for us to get to what work, will work best for South Africa, we need to have those discussions, and we need to trust that it's it's not something that's going to be personal, personal but it's something yeah. that, that will, will help the country succeed and perform better in the future. Um, it's a hot seat, and both yeah. of us know that obviously there's a lot that will be expected of us. It excites us, but it also, it, it's, it's an urgent matter and it's something that we do want to give all our attention to and that we have been giving all our attention to. So yes, definitely um, a, a welcome surprise in yeah. the sense that, you know, that I, 
there, there's a lot of great coaches. I'm, I'm really happy that, that, that Sonele is a part of the team that will take the Proteas forward. Well, wish you all the best with that, Jenny, the new role and, of course, uh, the impact that you are going to have on the TNL. So that's Jenny van Dijk, the head coach of the Spa Proteas, looking ahead to TNL and, of course, identifying the next group of players to potentially take to 2027 in Australia where the Nepal World Cup will be taking place. Well, she's campaigned in the league as a player for the Eastern Cape Allos way back when it was still called the Brutal Fruit Nepal Premier League. She returns now as the assistant coach of the Spa Proteas in a different capacity. And of course, Daniel M. Dodana joins me now. And I say Spa Proteas assistant coach. It's been a while for you to get used to the title, but pretty sure it still shocks you from time to time, right? Yeah, no, it does, Andy. Um, I am still in disbelief that... Yes. That's the title that I hold at the moment. Um, totally honoured though. Mm -hmm. It came as a huge surprise. I wasn't expecting it at all. And when the president called me, I was still in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And she told me that, you know, she's appointing me as the assistant coach with Jenny van Dijk. Um, yeah, but I've, I've, I've grabbed the opportunity with both hands. I am absolutely honoured, you know, to be trusted with such a huge responsibility and I'm looking forward to the journey ahead. And you already had your first assignment with the qualifiers and identifying young talent. You now switch to the TNL. What is the mandate here and what are you hoping to achieve as you watch the games? Well, obviously we know that um, there is a national squad that has been identified. We are looking at um, being at the TNL to see if we can see players that can make up the Fast Five team. Uh, we know, know we've got Fast Five, we've got um, Under 21 World Cup team that hasn't been finalized yet. Yes, those players that played at the African qualifiers, um, they some of them are not going to make the World Cup, so there are yeah. vacancies there. So it's a matter of making sure that we identify solid squads um, that can represent the country in the future. And, and what does that mean in practical terms? So if you're saying you're identifying, is this going to be a case of looking at individual performances, how players settle into a team environment, how they receive instructions from coaches? What are some of the things that you're going to be looking at when you're identifying the players? That's definitely key, you know, to see how players perform under pressure yeah. um, and players getting used to different coaches because yeah. coaches don't remain the same. How do they adapt to game plans? How do they go out on court and execute, you know, coaches' instructions? Um, and specifically when I think about the under-21s, you mm -hmm. know, we're going to have a lot of them in this in, in the Telcom Nepal League to yeah. also to see how they cope with a high-performance competitive environment, you know, because that's going to be good preparation for them as they're heading into the World Cup next year. And what does that feedback loop look like? So if you've identified a player or if there are areas where you feel they could improve, how does that feedback get to the coach and eventually yeah. to the player to make sure that you're seeing the results that you'd like? That's something that Jenny is specifically pedantic about. You yeah. know, feedback is important for players. And we want to build that relationship with the TNL coaches. Yeah. We want to be accessible. We want to be able to sit around a table mm -hmm. and discuss players that we've seen and have identified that could, you know, feed into into the, into the spa proteas. Mm -hmm. So that open relationship and communication is going to be very important. Mm -hmm. And if coaches are open to that, you know, we are there. We mm -hmm. want to have that. So we say, okay, I've identified Andy, for example. Mm -hmm. I think she's working well here and there. But maybe this is an area that maybe needs improvement. Mm -hmm. And then the coach can translate that uh, that feedback to the player. Okay, so you've been in the TNL before. Of course, it was a different name back then, but you were there as a player. If you're looking at the product and, you know, the improvement and growth that you've seen over the years with the introduction of sponsors and with teams, what do you think can still be done to grow the product even further? The product needs to be competitive. Yeah. Uh, the gap between first division and second division needs to close. And I'm happy to see young, dynamic uh, coaches who were former players coming on board, you know, yeah. sitting on those hot, hot seats, using the experience to empower the players. So I think with time, it's going to start becoming quite tightly contested mm. in both divisions. And maybe we can even get to a stage where we don't have Division 1 and Division 2, but we can have one big pool, you know, and make mm. sure that the games are, are, are quite competitive. And also for me, um, we speak a lot about we need a professional league in yeah. South Africa. Yeah. 
And that is the next step for us. You know, if we want to be world beaters and compete against the top teams in the world, we need our players to be in-house and they need to be professional. They need to be doing this on a daily basis and not on a part-time basis. And I think that's how we're going to be able to improve ourselves. And I suppose that would also help you as the coaching staff to perhaps lure back some of the talent that's playing in overseas leagues so you're able to have players on an equal footing and you don't see stages where others are playing in a professional league and some are only yeah. playing for a specific period in the year. Absolutely. I mean, we've been having this discussion with Jenny Van Dijk, the head coach, and we say we need to bridge that gap. Yeah. I mean, some of our players are playing in England. There's one in New Zealand. They're constantly exposed to that high competitive uh, yeah. play, you know. And if we can get our league is also so strong, then it would be okay. Yeah. But if our, if our league is not of standard, yeah. then it, it, it does make that gap much, much, much bigger. So, but main thing is to get our players back home give them the competitiveness that they need, and also for us to have more time with them. Because at the moment, half of the squad is overseas and the other half here is here um, back home. And what is the finish line, so to speak? So you're saying you're identifying some of these players in the Telcom Nepal League. When is the camp for those bar pro tiers? Mm -hmm. When do they get into competitive competition? And what is the roadmap looking like mm -hmm. after the TNL has wrapped up? Yeah, so that's why I'm here. That's one of the reasons <laughs> we're gonna be sitting around the table. We have sat already got a plan, but we just need approval, you know, from yeah. Naples South Effect to say, okay, we tick this box, we are happy. We are going to be having a camp in May, mm -hmm. but it won't be with the entire squad because most of the players are overseas, mm -hmm. but we're bringing in training partners to make sure that we have a fully fledged camp, that we can be able to play mm -hmm. and train effectively. And there are players that are falling out of that under 21 World Cup team that we're looking at bringing in as training partners, but the sooner we can start, the better for us. Oh, last thing would be that number five ranking looks like it's hanging by a thread. Uganda knocking on the door. When is the next international? Um, this is actually quite an interesting one because I've been saying to Coach Yeni, we need to play Uganda, we need to play Uganda, <laughs> you know, because we just want to settle this whole we are number one in Africa, thing, yeah. you know, and put that dog to rest. But we're going to have our first international test against Malawi uh, right about August, September. Those yeah. are the dates that we still need to confirm. And then we'll look at, uh, we would love to play Uganda. I certainly mm. would love to play Uganda. But we do need time with our team first, just mm. so that they can understand our coaching style and get the buy-in from the girls as to where we are going. And then we'll start competing with, uh, with other teams as well. Well, Coach, congratulations yet again and all the best with the talent identification, of course, the role within the SPA Proteus as well. Thanks so much, Andy. So that's Anilim Dodana. Then the assignment and the mission is pretty clear. They need to identify the next crop of South African talent as they look ahead to that World Cup in 2027 in Australia. And of course, looking at some of the youngsters that are going to be in action as well. If they fall out of the under-21s, Spa Proteas are there to catch them.